Hello, and welcome to the 20k Q&A. Well, it hasn't even been like two weeks and I already made my 10k special about my top 10 favorite bosses. Uh, Y'all are insane. And, and seriously, I can't thank you enough for this. So, for 20k I wanted to do a Q&A for, especially for the new folks, uh, because not even three weeks ago I was at 8k. So we have like another 13,000 people that are new here. And I think a Q&A is good for uh, introducing myself and for you, for you guys to get to know me a little bit more, as you can tell, I like to stutter a lot. Not that I like to, I, I just do. <laughs> My Q&As are not really super sporadic or entertaining visually, so simply, you know, put this in the background or whatever and just enjoy the ride. So yeah, let's get into the questions you guys have. I have a lot of them, surprisingly. So the first question for today is, of course, about Elden Ring, which I don't mind, of course. Um, how do you feel about Elden Ring's scaling variety within its weapon classes? Uh, so he gives some examples, like there's only six great spears, only like five scythes, uh, and there's a lot of thrusting swords or regular swords. That's a good question. I feel like it is lacking in certain aspects, because you know, like you mentioned, great spears, there's not that many. I wish there were more. Uh, there's actually not that many thrusting swords either, like the rapiers. I wish there were more of those. So, it's a little bit lacking in certain parts. I do agree there are a lot of, like, straight swords or regular swords, great swords. Uh, so I feel like they should have had more variety, especially with the scythes, because there's really not that many good ones, and if there are, it's like one or two. Um, I mean, but overall, when you compare it to the previous games, it's phenomenal. There are so many different weapons for so many different builds, for stupid builds, for OP builds, for just casual players. Like, it, it is insane. But I do agree, when it comes to the specific weapon classes, uh, there is a little bit of lacking there, but nothing crazy. But he also asks, what is your favorite f uh, fast food place? I don't know. I mean, Arby's has always come through. <laughs> Subway as well. I don't really have a specific... Actually, no, Chick-fil-A. There you go. That's my answer. Chick-fil-A is definitely, like, the OG for me. What was your first Monster Hunter game? And out of the games in the Monster Hunter series, which is your favorite? Mainline or spinoff? Good question. Uh, my favorite, or excuse me, my first Monster Hunter game was Monster Hunter 3 Try on the Wii. Uh, it's a funny story, because I was just at GameStop with my sister, and I saw it, and I asked the cashier, I was like, what's this game about? That's my 10-year-old voice. What's this game about? And he was like, yeah, you hunt monsters with this uh, companion called Cha-Cha. I was like, that sounds cool. So I called my mom, and I was like, Mom, can I get this game? It's only like like $15. It wasn't that expensive at all. She's like, sure. And like ever since then, I have loved Monster Hunter. I've been playing it for, I think, close to 12 years now. I, like, it has not left me at all, and I don't think it will anytime soon even though if I think the most recent games aren't the best. Uh, which leads to the next part of this question, which is your favorite? I have to say, easily, it's Monster Hunter World. The graphics, I know aren't the most important thing, but graphics, I mean, they are kind of crucial to me, because it has to look good, obviously, and Iceborne definitely looks the best. There's a lot of variety. There was a bit of a power issue with the game, in the sense that any new monster that came out, it had the best equipment, everyone was using it. But no, I had I had a lot of fun in that game. Uh, so yeah, World was definitely my favorite. When are you streaming again consistently, my man? Well, first of all, hello Tyler, it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. And that's a great question. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I do have a Twitch channel. I don't really stream on it that often, mainly because I have another job, because YouTube beforehand really wasn't making enough money to cut it. I'm still a college student, so it's not like I'm, I'm being rushed out the door. But right now, YouTube is making more, you know, funds, if that makes sense. I know money isn't everything, but it is a very crucial aspect that people forget to know. You're like, oh, this YouTuber is selling out. No, he's not. He's trying to pay his bills, you know? It's a job. But th that's a, you know, side trail. When it comes to when I'll be streaming again consistently, it it'll most likely be when this becomes my full-time gig, or when it becomes the only thing I'll be doing, which hopefully will be pretty soon. Um, I'm debating whether to leave the job that I'm at right now, or to just to keep it, because uh, it is a steady pace of income, doesn't take too much out of my week, but even then, when I'm there, all I can think about is like my next YouTube video. Uh, I, I do really want to start streaming again consistently, and I will most likely stream the next challenge run, and then I'll take the best clips and still make a video out of it for those who can't make the streams. Uh, just And also just because I love making videos. So 
Yeah, great question, and hopefully I will be streaming again consistently. If you want to follow me there, go for it, uh, because that is a definite yes, I will be streaming again soon. So, there you go. Do you plan on to continue doing, that's not how you say it, do you plan to continue doing challenge runs? Uh, of course. As long as they're fun to make, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue making challenge runs. And, and to give you, you know, a comparison, I've made Moss Hunter content since I started this channel, which was like 2015. Well, I started in 2014, but my content then was like really bad. And then I decided to do Moss Hunter content around 2015 and 16. And hey, it's 2022 and I'm still making Moss Hunter content. So hey, if I still enjoy making it, I will for sure still make those videos. Um... And even then, if I start to kind of lack in challenge runs, if I'm like, I don't really feel like doing these challenges anymore, I will most likely still do Elden Ring content. Because those are like my two favorite franchises, Moss Hunter and Soulsborne. And there's so much content within those two games, you know, in terms of videos. I don't think they're going to go anywhere anytime soon. The goal here is to basically lure people in with uh, these new popular games that, of course, I enjoy playing and making videos about. That's not the case, only. But hopefully you also check out my neutral gaming video essays, like, uh, like the power of silence in video games. I made a video about that, I think, like a few months ago. And the one I'm currently working on is the games I used to play in my childhood versus the games I play right now. You know, I like to make neutral gaming content and also to provide content that people I know subscribe for, such as Monster Hunter, such as Elden Ring, or the challenge runs in this case. So don't worry, it's not going away anytime soon, but in between, I'll be mixing the content that I enjoy the most making, which is my uh, neutral video game essays. But don't worry, we're gonna have a good balance. How do you keep up your uploading schedule or even find the confidence to start uploading? Uh, this is a great question. So let me answer the first part. I don't really have an uploading schedule, I basically have a lot of free time on my hands because, you know, I'm a college student and I'm actually taking a year off, so I have so much free time on my hands to make videos and it's not very strict. It's not like I upload on Saturdays and Mondays. I just upload when I can and when I can is a lot of the time. So it may look like I have a schedule, but I really don't. <laughs> um, but you just, you just gotta stay consistent with it. That's pretty much all there is to it, you know? I think to myself, okay, I'll do like maybe a couple hours of script writing today. And once you reach a certain threshold, you're like, okay, now I got to upload a video. I try to upload every, every week or every seven days, uh, to be more specific. So that's kind of where I'm at with my scheduling. If I reach like the six day mark, I'm like, okay, we're going to hit the ground today. We're going to make a video. We're going to make it good. And we're going to upload it tomorrow. It, like, the funny thing is, is that YouTube is one of the things that I'm most passionate about. It is the most passionate thing right now in my life. Uh, so, like, when it comes to a schedule, it's not really restrictive, it's improvement. At least that's the way I see it. Um, which kind of leads to your next question, or next part of this question, or even find the confidence to start uploading. When I started uploading content, I thought it was pretty good. And then a year later, I looked back on it, and I thought to myself, wow, that's terrible. And then a year later, after that mark, I thought, wow, my content is garbage. Or at least back in the day, it was garbage. And right now, if I look back on a video I made a year ago, I'm going to think to myself, maybe it's okay, but it could have been a lot better. You know, so there is a, there is a staircase of improvement. And when you start uploading, there is, you just got to have confidence to, and you have to have an understanding that it is not going to be the best. When I started this channel, when I started to take it more seriously two years ago, I knew for a fact that I was not going to be the best. But I was going to do the best that I could, you know? And that's really where the confidence starts. When you don't compare yourself to other YouTubers. Just compare yourself to where you are right now and where you were six months ago or a year ago or two years ago because I think the way you're phrasing that question makes me think I mean I'm sorry if I'm assuming it makes you feel like you're you're buried underneath all the other successful youtubers don't worry about them just worry about the content you're making and the improvements on your channel that's about it uh, at least for me there may be some more underlying matter that is super profound but I just can't think of it at the moment what brought you to the Soulsborne series? Great question. 
sorry, I do that a lot when I mess up my words. I just start beatboxing, <laughs> as you could probably tell. But yes, what brought me to the Soulsborne series? So this is a really funny story. Um, so when I first bought my PlayStation 4 Pro, I think it was 2016, 17, I also got a video game with it, which was Bloodborne. And I played it right away when I was able to, you know, play my PlayStation. Because we got it for Christmas, but we got it on Black Friday. So I had to wait a little bit. And basically, I started playing it, and I could not even get past the tutorial. N not because it was difficult, but because I just didn't know what to do. Like, these games really don't hold your hand at all, so trying to figure out where to go next was very difficult. And so that was, like, really annoying for me. So I was like, alright, I'm just gonna stop playing this game. And then I played a bunch of different games until, like, two years later. <laughs> Two years later, I finally was like, you know what, I'm gonna try Bloodborne again. Now in hindsight, I could have not been an idiot and look up like a walkthrough or just how to get past the first part of Bloodborne or whatever the case may be. That would have really helped, but I just didn't do it. But once I got past that first section, which I once I finally figured out what to do, like the rest is history, I fell in love with Bloodborne. And actually, you know, two years later when I first picked it up again, I played through the game like seven times over because I enjoyed it so much. So Bloodborne is my first, you know, Souls game, if you want to put it that way, Souls game. And like, it was a, such a great introduction to the series. I, I truly love it. And Bloodborne to this day is still my favorite out of the Soulsborne series. Maybe besides Elden Ring, I'm not sure yet. What I have to do probably is I have to go back and play Bloodborne just to kind of see how it is. But yeah, that's kind of how I was brought into the series. I started it, I failed miserably, and then two years later, I finally got into it, and yeah. And, and funny enough, I went backwards. So I started with Bloodborne, then I did Dark Souls 3, 2, 1, and then I played Sekiro. Uh, I never played Demon Souls, but yeah, it was a weird, it was a weird uh, ladder climb, if you want to call it that way. I'm not good at asking questions, so how is your life going on? <laughs> My life is going good, thanks. Um, that's it, I guess. <laughs> what is your vision for the future of your channel? <laughs> Great question. A very heavy one at that. <laughs> it it, it kind of relates to the other question, which is like, are you going to do more challenge runs? So, I, I guess my answer is, it's still going to be video games, obviously. I don't really feel like branching out. I don't mind doing commentary videos. But I feel like I'm more passionate about just doing video game content. And, and kind of the way it works essentially is, if a new game comes out and I enjoy playing it, I'm going to make a video about it regardless. And I know people have subscribed for certain videos, or excuse me, for certain video games, such as Elden Ring, such as Monster Hunter, and I still enjoy making those videos as well. Um, maybe not as frequently as people would like, but you're still going to get your content. So. It basically, the future is, whatever new game comes out, I'm gonna make them. Whatever video game essays I wanna talk about, I'm going to make them. And I will also visit back to the video games that this channel was built upon, such as Monster Hunter and such as Elden Ring. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. It's basically gonna be a bunch of video games with a couple of well-known series revisiting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Do you still talk to the Mask Man? Of course I do. He's he's my buddy. Um, if you didn't know, the Mask Man is this YouTuber who makes anime slash manga content, and I, I I knew him in high school. So and I actually I just talked to him recently. Uh, yeah, I mean yeah, that's pretty much the answer to your question, I guess. I still talk to him. I love Jorge. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine, and he's the best. Not as good as me in terms of making content, but he's still pretty cool. I know you already made a joke about this in a video, but how do you pronounce your username? How do you pronounce your username? How the frick do you say your name? So I get this question a lot, especially for new people who don't know how to pronounce my name. It's pretty simple. Uh, my name is pronounced- I do have a question, and I have an answer, hopefully. What are some of your favorite video games ever? So let me address this question in a weird way, because obviously my favorite video games ever is a great video idea. So I'm not going to answer it in the way that you think I'm going to answer it. Um, I'll probably save that for like 50k or potentially 100k uh, subscribers because that is a video that I actually am planning right now. 
uh, just in case if we hit that milestone sooner than expected, which I hope we do. Um, and I just feel like that is going to be something very crucial because I made my favorite video games ever uh, as a 1K special. And to make that at like 100K, it would just it would just fit so perfectly. Like my OCD would be like satisfied. But what are some of your favorite video games ever? Funny enough, the way I interpret this question was like genres. What are your favorite video game genres? So let me answer it that way. I hope you don't mind. So obviously, action, RPGs, fantasy, those are my favorite. But surprisingly, I think what's edging them out a little bit more are story games. Story games, I just get very involved with. There is such a huge emotional connection with these games that I... I love more than just simply playing or fighting something. Not saying that I don't like fighting games or action-based games. As a matter of fact, I play them more than I do story games. But when I do play story games, they leave an impression on me that no other action-oriented game can. And story games are just phenomenal. Like, if you find a good story game, it stands the test of time. I'll give you an example. If you're new to this channel, one of my favorite games of all time, and I'm okay with sharing this because you don't know where it is placed on the list, one of my favorite games of all time is The Last of Us. It is a masterpiece, it came out in 2014, and to this day, I still think it's one of the best story games ever. Um, that might actually be a good video idea, games that stood the test of time. But yeah, I, I absolutely love The Last of Us. So, that, that kind of answers your question, hopefully. <laughs> Big congrats, thank you. What's your favorite food slash meal? Um, sushi. I love sushi. We actually, uh, my brother came down from Hawaii, and my family and I, besides my sister, she lives in Virginia, uh, we went to a very nice sushi place, uh, 40 minutes away from our house, and it was delightful. It was so good, like 10 out of 10. I absolutely love sushi so much. You already made a video about your favorite video game bosses, so what are your most hated ones? A uh, great question. Uh, unfortunately, I will probably save that for a video. I actually responded to this comment. What did I say? That'll be a video to make in the near future for sure. Yeah. Um, I will tell you one of... I, I will tell you at least one of them. One of them is this boss. I, it's like the Harbinger... whatever. It's from Final Fantasy VII the remake. If I remember it, I'll put it in the video right now. This thing sucks because it is a 20 minute long boss fight and halfway through there is this bullcrap like phase and they can he can instantly kill you and if you die you have to start all the way back. And it's not like, you know, a couple minutes back. You have to start from the very beginning and fighting that bullcrap phase is like halfway through that 20 minute fight. So 10 minutes obviously. And I just hated it. And, and obviously I'll go more into detail when I make that video eventually. So yeah, if you could eliminate slash delete slash kill any YouTuber, who would it be? You get away with it and you get all their subs. Ooh. I would probably say the Masked Man simply because he has 260,000. I mean, I know there's like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye who have more, you know, millions of subscribers, but I want to earn my subscribers. And I'm not just saying that, you know, for people to think, wow, Josh is really honest and truthful. It's just, I don't know, I just, I want to work for it. You know, I've worked this hard for 20k, let me, let me earn the rest of it. Also, I hate Jorge's channel. It could die in a fire. I'm joking, by the way. <laughs> Q&A face reveal? I've actually revealed my face uh, a few times. If I get this question enough, I'll actually make a separate video just showing you the amount of times that I've revealed my face, because I'm, I don't really keep it a secret. If you look throughout my channel, you'll probably find my face in there. Hopefully not when I recently shaved, because I hate my face without my beard. My beard just pulls it all together. I'm Egyptian, so I grow a pretty good beard. Um, too bad that my hairline is receding, so all my hair from the top of my head is gonna go to the bottom half of my face. But hey, it still looks pretty good. And last, but certainly not least, the best question for last, are you food man? Thank you guys for watching, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys are incredible. Again, thank you so much for what is it, 20k? I mean, we're at 21k at the at, when I'm making this video. It is insane. S like, seriously. I'll probably take some time to kind of organize, like, memberships and Patreon stuff. Uh, or, you know, Twitch subscriptions so that you guys get your stuff uh, and, and whatnot. 
But again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this Q&A was enjoyable in the background or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone, and of course, stay safe.